This episode is brought to you by the Ithaca College MBA Entertainment and Media Program. Hello, and welcome to 3Q, where I interview industry professionals for just 15 minutes by asking three powerful questions. I'm your host, Rachel Vogel, and joining me for tonight's episode is Nikki Boone. Nikki is part of Kane Brown's management team and looks after a group of other incredible artists like Knightley. She was named as 2023's Next Big Thing by Music Row and recognized by the Nashville Briefing as a disruptor. So Nikki, such a pleasure to have you join me on the podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. We're we're going on a work retreat tomorrow for the first time ever. So that'll be exciting. And yeah, it's been a great day. Well, are you ready to dive into these questions? I'm ready. I hope so. All right. (laughs) Question one, imagine for a second, you're sitting down with your younger self. What one piece of advice would you give her on a personal note? And what one piece of advice would you give her from a business perspective? So on this, I think, I think they really go pretty hand in hand, but uh, something that I've really tried to learn in the last few years, and I wish I started this much earlier, uh, is just about delegation and how delegating is such a good thing. I think for a very long time, I, you know, wanted to make sure I was in every meeting, I was on every call, I was at every dinner or whatever it was, because there's like a part of you that feels like if you're not there, you're going to miss something that you can't, you know, come back from or you're not as important in this or that, right? But I think that um, when you can get to a place where you learn what your strengths are, and then you can start to build the team around you where the things that maybe you're not as strong or a little bit more of weakness or something that you just don't enjoy as much to start building your team with those people so that you can really focus on the things that you love to do and that you're good at. But it definitely takes, you know, some trial and error on people and just really kind of learning what your sweet spot is. But but yeah, definitely learn to delegate as soon as you can. Such a good lesson that you need to learn early on. And I'm sure many people have. How would you navigate? Like, let's say you're in your 20s and you're just starting to mix different personalities. You're learning how to work with people in this industry. How would you navigate when you come across somebody that it's not your favorite person, but you know you really need to work with them? That's a great question. It's, you know, it's just something about like growing, you know? and growing as someone who's better in your own job and just as a person, you're not always gonna get along with everyone and that's okay, you know? It's just, it's just, a, it's just a growth thing that is, you just learn by, again, by like trial and error. I have people, you know, that I work with that sometimes will, like, I'm not good at being organized and I know that these people are gonna watch this and, and they're gonna be like, oh, I know what she's talking about, like uh, just, sometimes calendars and schedules, things that feel really tedious get overwhelming to me. And so when they come to me and they're like, hey, you have like this, this and this on your list today, like initially it's like very overwhelming. And then it's just like, these people are helping me, you know, like this is this is what's good for me. This is what I need. And it's just kind of learning how to how to take a step back from getting overwhelmed and just remembering like that person is here to help. This is something you don't like to do and they do and they're doing it for you. So accept it. And you're on the management side of things. How do you, so you have people that help delegate you, but then you're helping delegate somebody else. So how does that work? Right. Well, that's the thing. It's um, when it comes to the artists that I work with and the different projects that I'm on, it's, it's so much easier for me to do that for other people than it is for me to do it for myself. So, and in myself, like professionally, you know, keeping my calendars and that kind of stuff for me on my side, it always kind of goes to the back burner because I'm always so much more focused on my artist calendar, my artist schedule and not missing anything there. And so that kind of takes a back seat. And so I need, you know, those people that can come in and like, make sure that I'm staying on my calendar and like my tasks so that I can serve my artists. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's also something that I've been able to start to spread out for them as well, you know, because especially when you work with artists and you're a manager, you feel like you are the one that's supposed to be doing that for them always. Um, like a good example is with the alt pop band that we, that we manage nightly. Uh, they just put an album out in August and we had this huge thing of like wanting to do a really, really cool vinyl. And vinyls are just the most intense process. 
and timeline and approvals and all of that. And it like got to be so overwhelming that someone on our team, Jess, um, she's our management coordinator. I always tell her there's no way the finals would have happened unless she was like keeping every single detail in order. And I'm, I love that. Like I got to be involved on the creative side with the band and she got to take over the side that was like, okay, these test prints are have to be approved by this day. So you can have them by the time the album comes out. Just those things like that. And that goes back into like being okay with delegating and giving her the credit of like those vinyls happen for the band because of you. And that's it. It's it's all of those things kind of wrapped in. Super important. All right, moving on. Every industry has its dirty little secrets. And we both know that it's no different in the music industry. Sometimes people think that's a bad thing, but that's not always the case. Sometimes they can be good. What's one secret you would like to share with our listeners about the industry? Uh, This one took me a minute to really think about what I wanted to say. But um, at the end of the day, I think it's just that people are people. And um, sometimes we hold people on such a high pedestal that we forget that everybody is out here doing their best job that they can to serve their artists or serve their label or whatever, whatever position that they're doing. Like in college, I know I I looked at so many of these like songwriters and producers and people and labels and things like that, which it's you should definitely respect people for like what they have done and the position that they're in. I'm not saying taking away from that at all. But I think, you know, if we can start to realize like it's OK to reach out to those people or ask them if you can, you know, meet with them or if you can kind of just get to know them on a on a different level, it's it's OK. Like they are just people, you know, like a good example is Martha, who's my boss now, when I was in college, she spoke to our class and I saw her at an industry event uh, maybe two weeks afterwards. And it was one of the first industry events I'd gone to. So I was super nervous. I walked in. I didn't want to go. I almost didn't go. I was like (laughs) 20 minutes from just being like, I'm not going to this because I didn't know anyone. And you start asking yourself, like, who am I going to stand by? Like, what am I going to talk about? You're like, who am I to walk into this room? (laughs) Yes. And that is so intimidating, you know? And I remember walking in there and she was one of the first people that I saw. And because it was, it was one of those moments where I was like, she, she probably wants to hear that. I'm thankful that she talked to our class, right? Like that's an okay thing to say. So I just walked up to her and I just said, thanks for talking to our class. It was really great. I learned a lot. That's all I said. And she like immediately on the spot offered me an internship and I interned for her for two years and now I've worked with her ever since, you know? And so it's like, if I would have been too scared because like at that point, she was just so much further in her career than me. I was a college student. Like if I would have not done that, now I can look and be like, my life would be so different, you know? So it's kind of like, obviously, like I said, respecting people for what they've done, but not being afraid to kind of like make that ask or say hello or just say thank you or like, hey, I you know, saw you in this, or I read this about you. I think it's great. Just want to say hi, you know, like Mm -hmm. you just being okay with remembering that people are just people. Yeah, totally. And I like that you bring up the internship thing, because I feel like that's a lot of things that people in that in that time period feel. But you know, nobody knows what you want unless you ask or unless you right. put it out there. So you right. got to do that. Before we jump into the last question, I so you've dabbled in many different parts of the industry from being a tour manager to being a day-to-day manager to signing your own acts of artists and songwriters. How do you think all of your experiences have helped you get to where you are today? And do you think that it's really important to be well-rounded in this industry to be successful? Yes, 100%. I actually, when I first moved to Nashville, I wanted to be an artist or a songwriter. So that was even part of it too, because I think in in the role that I'm in in management, I now have an understanding of what my artists go through when they're in a studio and they have to sing in front of a room of people, or they go into a writing session with people they've never met before and are expected to kind of like pour out their hearts and, you know, write something amazing every single day. I've been there. And so now after my artists have a right, like I'm not bothering them with a bunch of tasks and things because that's kind of an exhausting thing. And then on the tour management side, it's it's the same thing. I've been out there. I think people assume when you're out on tour, you're just like partying all day, 
staying up all night playing games with your with the people on the road like whatever sleeping all day and it's it is so exhausting it's it's one of the most like draining things but also one of the most rewarding things so you're living on like this adrenaline just like constantly out there so experiencing that is also why i don't put so much on my artists when they're out on the road because i don't want to burn them out because I know touring is like that's it's it's the most money you really spend on on marketing a, like a year when you're going out there and you're paying for your transportation and your crew and you know your production and everything around you to go out there and reach the fans then the number one thing they need to be doing is like being ready to reach the fans you know and then yeah being a day to day has helped me with just kind of like the new people that we've brought in and like them stepping into those roles and then signing yeah it's been it's been so cool to have experienced kind of like all of these different aspects because it definitely it definitely teaches me so much even to the point my husband is a mixer and he like mixes all these amazing people in country music and and outside of it too and from him it's like now i understand like what is important about a mix and like a master and i think a lot of people Someone told me this just a, a couple of weeks ago in their college class, like they didn't they they graduated and started working as an A&R, like as assistant and didn't know like what the difference was a mix and a master. And it's like these little things that like you can't expect people to learn them unless like someone teaches them about that, you know. So, yeah, I think getting to know other aspects is so important. And even if you don't do it as a job, get to know those people that do and ask them questions because it's just going to make you so much more understanding and a better manager at the end of the day. All right. Throughout your career, I can only imagine you've been asked a lot of questions, whether for industry conferences, the media, or even a promotion. But throughout all of those interviews and all of those questions, there has to be one that you've never been asked but would have liked to. So what is that question and what would be your answer? I I think it's no one's really asked me ever advice on how to not get burnt out. And I think the answer is like that you have to be a super fan of your artists that you work with, especially on the management side, or even like if you're working at a label or a publisher or in any aspect, being a super fan of the people that you work with. With Kane starting out in the very beginning, going out on tour with him, seeing his show being such a fan of him from the start and being a fan of him and his music and the way he performs but then being a fan of like how he is with his fans and how he treats them just with so much kindness and respect and i remember like the second weekend out we stayed out until almost four in the morning in myrtle beach because he met every single fan at the end of the night and he wanted to take a picture with every single person that stayed and just like seeing that dedication and like getting to work with him. Like I don't get burnt out on Kane because I'm such a huge fan of him and of like what he wants to do. Like, I just want to be involved in that because this is a 24 seven job. So it is, it's easy, you know, for people, if, if you don't feel that level of passion to get burnt out, you know, um, on nightly, I, loved that band. I still do. I mean, obviously I'm still a super fan, but I loved them before I ever met them and went and I, I, I like went and saw them in Detroit because I wanted to go to a non-industry show where I could just like be a super fan and like sing all the words. And I wanted to support them because in this industry, it's very easy to like always get put on a list, you know, and like go to those shows, especially for like a smaller act. Like this is just a PSA, like go to the show, buy the tickets, buy a piece of merch. Like that is the lifeblood of these bands, you know, and these like smaller artists to be able to grow. So that's just a one tiny thing I want to put out there. But yeah, just being a super fan of your of the artists that you work with. Since I posted them so many times on my Instagram, that's how we got connected for me to be able to work with them. They had seen me post them. They saw I worked in management. And so they reached out to me when they were looking for a new manager and set up the meeting that way. So, wow. you know, things just kind of like and now it's 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 like I said, it's a 24 seven job, but I feel so lucky and very blessed to like get to do this. Um, and I think that's the other part of it is is doing your best to like not take it for granted. Try not to get jaded in this industry. Like you get to work in an industry with the most like creative and talented people. You get to go to concerts and stand at the front of house or stand side stage or on the stage, go backstage. Like those kind of things are dreams for people and that's your job. So I think just remembering what you get to do and how freaking cool it is, is like a very good way to to keep yourself, you know, from getting burnt out and like to keep working, keep hustling 
for your artists because when it all you know comes together it's just the most rewarding thing in the whole world do you remember before we hop off do you remember the last show that you were at where you were just like a mega super fan you bought the ticket you it wasn't your artist uh well nightly was one of them that was i mean that was back in 2020 it's crazy i saw them right before covid and everything oh, which was wow. pretty nuts but um yeah like john mayer super fan I always like, like to buy those tickets. It's hard though. It's getting way hard than now when you when he puts the tickets oh my out gosh. to get one. But uh but yeah, I mean that's he's always been like I kind of I, I kind of use him as a North Star when I try to think um about would this be cool if my artist did this? Would the would their fans think that's cool? I think about like, well, if John Mayer did this, like would I buy this? Would I go to this? Would I watch this? You know? He's kind of like yeah. that North Star for me. That's a good way of thinking. I did just, I did just land those Taylor Swift tickets. So, yeah. but I feel you. It's hard. <laughs> it is. It's freaking hard. It's really That's hard. Super hard. But yeah, uh, yeah. What a queen. <laughs> we love well, her. Nikki, thanks again for joining me and to thanks everyone listening. Me. I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Stay tuned for next week of Three Q, where we interview industry professionals for just fifteen minutes by asking three powerful questions. One final reminder, this episode is brought to you by the Ithaca College MBA Entertainment and Media Program. See you next time.